Hi, everybody. I have my lights on in the studio this evening. It's pretty late. Um, it's been a long day, a really long day. Uh, I knew when I woke up this morning that I was going to struggle all day. That happens with my anxiety. I kind of know right when I wake up. And so I tried to, um, you know, be outside most of the day. I went running. And then we went biking and we took the bikes to Bethel Beach and then we walked the beach, which takes about an hour, you know, picking up sea glass. And of course I found a turquoise piece of sea glass and didn't realize I was holding everything in my ball cap. And every time I walked, I was just throwing the sea glass away. Like a toddler with an Easter basket, quite literally. And, um, Regardless, I had several moments today where I was thinking about um, my friends, all of you, my yoga students, and really feeling this incredible gratefulness for all of you. Um, you know, I used to always think I was introverted. And then I kind of became 40 and I realized I need that human connection. It kind of uh, feeds my soul. I need the touch. I need the hugs. I need the kisses. I need the interaction. And for all of you who have given me this in the last month, I so appreciate you in this moment. Um, messages, texts, emails, phone calls, you name it. Um, thank you so much. And... Two things I noticed today, which kind of lifted my spirits, because today, again, has been bleh. I mean, there's no other way to say it. It's been bleh. Um, I noticed when Finn and I went to Bethel Beach, that everyone's waving, everyone's saying hello. If you're talking to people from a social distance, People who normally wouldn't have noticed you or had a conversation with you, all of a sudden they want to tell you their life story and they want to talk to you about picking up litter and karma and all of these things. And I just think that I still want to believe something good is going to come out of this. Um, I do. The other thing is that I came so close to a bald eagle tonight on my way here. Um, I see them all the time. They're always at our house and on our pier. And um, we have two actually who mate and um, I don't know the correct terminology, but they're always on our pier. And I came so close to one tonight and it was incredible, like literally incredible. And I just stopped in that moment and I was like, this is what this is all about right here. I'm having a hard time tonight. I'm at a loss for words. Again, I have this weird relationship now with my laptop. I don't know what we're really doing with the class tonight. It's a yin class. I'd like for you to relax. I'd like for you to stretch and open, open the body, the shoulders, the hips, everything. Um, I'm going to try to play some music. I don't know if it's going to work. Um, oh, one other thing I wanted to tell all of you now that I've talked for four minutes. I'm really trying hard to put a virtual tip jar on my YouTube channel. I worked for about an hour or two today trying to figure it out. I cannot figure it out. So if any of you have any tips, please let me know and please be patient with me. Any donations I can get at this point, it's a good thing. It's a good thing because um, we don't know what the future holds and I want to keep the studio open. So uh, that will be coming, look for that. And with that, let's go ahead and get started on our backs. Go ahead and lie down in your Shavasana position. 
the traditional form or expression of the pose, as you all probably know by now if you've been watching my videos. And those of you who come to my classes know, make your Shavasana comfortable because we're going to be here for several minutes in addition to my talking for five minutes. But see, that's the good thing. You can just, you can just pause and fast forward. You don't have to listen to me. But go ahead and find your comfortable Shavasana position. Maybe you bring in a bolster, a blanket, some pillows under the legs. You guys know I like the blanket over the pelvis. That's for you, Susan. Maybe a blanket behind the head or rolled up under the neck. You can have an eye pillow or even just something covering the eyes to help you meditate. Just find your comfortable position. And I know, and you all know, that after I broke my tibia and fibula, and I came back to yoga, I had a real hard time with my anxiety and everything else, like laying in that open position where you're opening the heart space. So if it feels better to be on your stomach, your side, sitting in Sukhasana, a, a nice, easy, comfortable seat, you can do that here as well. So just find your Shavasana. I'm going to try to start the music. There's this song that I love called the Southern Sea, and it's a beautiful song for what we're doing here. The music sounds loud to me. I don't know that it does for you. And I'm hoping you can still hear my voice. start to take several deep breaths. Tonight, just, just feel the breath as it moves through the body. Listen to the music. See if you can hear it. This song brings me so much peace.
continue to focus on the breath, observing the mental body, the physical body. You all know I'm at a loss for words tonight, so that's why I brought in the music. I'm a musician, so music helps me. Sometimes there just are no words. Remember tonight why you showed up. There are days when I come here and I'm thinking, why did I show up? What is it bringing to my life? My heart, my soul, my energy. Think about why you're here and use this as your intention for your practice. And again, I'm not going to talk a lot tonight. I'm going to keep playing the music. Such a beautiful song uh, before we start our practice or as we start our practice. I'd like for you tonight to remember to love you and love your practice. Love your practice for what it was yesterday, what it will be tomorrow, but more importantly, love it for what it is right now, right here in this moment. Let it teach you, give you, and show you. That's why we come to the mat. Go ahead and come into a wide-legged Velasana child's pose. You can see here, you can either widen the legs, bring the toes to touch. You can keep the feet wide.
can always bring in a bolster, big pillow, lay the body down, adjusting as you need to. side. Go ahead and turn the head. Bring the other cheek down to the bolster, the blanket, the pillow, the mat. If the forehead is down on the mat, just stay where you are. And you all know as we move through these classes and these poses, I'm on video now, so if at any point whatever you're holding feels good, continue to hold it. Don't feel the need to immediately follow what I'm guiding you to do. With that being said, we're going to move into a velocity twist. So go ahead and bring your hands over to the right. Stack the left hand on top of the right, if that's available, and lower the head back down. center and bring them over to the left stacking excuse me the right hand on top of the left and lower the head down and for those of you with knee issues I mean my right knee is bothering me a lot tonight. 
Um, you can always bring in something to support the legs here. I'm just gonna give you a little visual as you all hold this Velocina twist. place for the legs. Woo. For me, that shoulder has always been troublesome, so you're going to feel different from side to side, and that's okay. Just pause here wherever you are.
Continue to breathe. Keep moving the breath through the body. Years go by and I still think it's 
come out of this intense shoulder stretch. So when you're ready, come back onto the belly and pause. Maybe you pause in crocodile with the hands stack, the forehead resting on the hands. And then when you're ready, we're going to come into this Arda Hanuman pose, this dragon pose. And I think I'm going to start with my left knee on the knee pad or the blanket. I told you all my, my right knee is on fire, so um, I'm going to start with the left knee down. Send that right leg forward. You can keep the back toes tucked, you can slap the foot. I just don't want this right knee in front of the ankle. It's either directly above or slightly behind. So find your dragon. You can see I'm using blocks here. You can shift back and forth if that feels good for you before settling. And again, I'm going to come out of the pose. Keeping my props where they are. Would like to know how the video is going because I have no idea. But I like the music. And as you allow the body to settle in the pose, call to mind your intention, feel the music, feel the breath. Just make sure that left knee is above or directly behind the ankle. I'm feeling this tonight. Allow the hip flexors to really open here. And again, I'm going to come out of the pose. to not break out in song, so I really try to control myself. 
trying to remember to be professional and that I'm running a business, but I want to sing so badly with this music. <laughs> oh, my favorite song ever.
tuck the toes, lift the knee. Come back to plank. And then come to a comfortable seat, Sukhasana. Maybe you want to sit up on something here, a blanket or a pillow. Extend the feet wide. Flex the feet. Maybe you have blankets, long folders. You guys get the drill now. Keep the length and spine here. Start to come forward, feeling the stretch through the inner thighs and groin. And then rest the elbows. At whatever height feels good for you. Again, you might be here. And that's okay. Wherever you are, continue to breathe and feel the music.
back to center. Lift the legs, pause for a moment here. Slightly shift the bum to the left, and then allow the legs to lower to the right. Again, extend that left arm. Maybe the gaze goes toward that hand. You can always place your right hand on top of your thigh if you want to intensify the supine spinal twist. Wherever you are, just start to settle in. turn the music back up. Hopefully you can hear it. No idea. Won't know until the video is done. to center before untwisting the spine and the body and go ahead and find your comfortable shavasana position once more lay down in a way that is comfortable for you doesn't matter what it looks like And start to settle in. Find the intention, the breath, observe the mental body, the physical body. Feel the spirit within that, that energy, that soul, that human connection. And allow yourself to be here as long as you want, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I'll turn the music up. And feel free to pause the video here, as you all know. In yoga mythology, 
Durga is a fearless warrior goddess who vanquishes demons. Her mantra tells us to face our fears, stand up for what we believe in, and bravely engage in the world. She is our inner strength itself. Om evokes everything that exists. Doom is Durga's seed syllable, meaning it contains her power in the way that an acorn contains an oak tree. Durga Ye is how we sing her name in the mantra. And Namaha means that we bow down, we honor when we chant Om Doom Durga Ye. <laughs> Durga Ye, Namaha, we call upon the pure strength that resides within us and we step into our power. Find your inner strength. Om Doom Durgaya Namaha. Just a little bit of yoga mythology. We'll meet in Sukhasana, a comfortable easy seat, and bring the hands to heart center. Acknowledge you showed up on your mat. What will you take with you when you leave? Bring the hands to the forehead in honor of mindful thought to the lips in honor of mindful speech, and back down to prayer center, always be mindful of love, kindness, compassion, and empathy for yourselves first, and then for all others. May you be happy, may you be healthy, may you be safe, and may you live with ease. Thank you so much for sharing your practice with me. Let us bow to one another as we say Namaste. Namaste, friends, yogis. I love you all. I miss you.